Today's guest is Ken Jocelyn. He's the CEO of the Ken Jocelyn team, which is a real estate company and um, the owner and founder of Grow Stack Drive. Um, he's a pastor turned coach, a real estate professional. He's closed over $250 million in real estate transactions. Um, and he, this Grow Stack Drive that he runs is um, for business leaders and they help them build confidence, gain clarity and create community. And when he says that, he really freaking means it. So Ken and I met at a mastermind and Ken is just one of those people that completely changed the experience. He just has like a gravitational pull, you know, he's just, um, I think it's his background as a pastor. He has a huge heart. He's very well-spoken. He's very passionate about growth and what he does. And I was just really impressed with him as a human. He's putting together some absolutely amazing events um, with some of the top leaders in the world and business and personal development. So I'll let him tell you about that, but um, we'll link that in the show notes as well. Um, he had a really cool experience where he basically stumbled across Grant Cardone on an Instagram ad. And now it's, has become you know his number one licensee at one point. And he's just killing it. And he's just on this like on fire growth journey that is just so um, soul inspiring to just be around. I know you guys are going to feel that. And he just, he has a ton of wisdom. He's an amazing human, happy and proud to call him one of my friends. And so I just wanted to bring him to you guys today because we haven't had a lot of episodes about business growth and entrepreneurship and all of that. So I wanted to serve you guys in that way because I had something I'm very passionate about. And I know many of you are as well. So we'll go ahead and jump in. Oh, real quick. Sorry. Before we jump in, make sure that you note that he does have a book that is amazing. It's on Amazon. It's called As the Leader Grows. So we'll link that up um, and follow him on social media. It's Ken Jocelyn, J-O-S-L-I-N. He's one of my favorite accounts to follow. Like everything Ken drops is like freaking fire. You know, when you're scrolling and then you hit something, you're like, dang, that like stuff with me all day today. It's that kind of stuff. So make sure you check him out on social media as well. All right. Now we will jump in. Here is Ken Jocelyn. Okay, guys, I'm so excited. You guys are in for a treat today because Ken brings the freaking fire. Ken brings the freaking fire. I, I love that you were, you, you know, you're a pastor, you're a preacher. <laughs> like it shows in the way you're uh, able to share a message so effectively. And you're just such an inspiring person. Every single time I see one of your videos on Instagram or TikTok, I'm like, oh, yes, yes. It just lights me up. So I thought we could start by talking about Grow Sack Drive. And yeah. I was if you could share a little bit of your journey, because I know right now there's a lot of people that are in one of two boats. They either like kind of want to go for it and get out of their nine to five and like see what they're made of, but they're kind of scared. It's scary. Or they're just feeling kind of, they have the business and they're feeling kind of stuck in it, you know? And so I was wondering what, if we can talk about Grow Sack Drive, but a little bit also, can you uh, lace into that your own personal experience of like getting past those yeah. Kind of hurdles. Yeah. Well, I would say this number one, thank you for letting me join you today. Um, I have this really cool book right here. It's called <laughs> short term keto. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that chick. Um, yeah. Super excited. Thank you for the gift, by the way. Um, I and I know you saw it on the, on the, on the Instagram post. I, I got home from being out of town. And I had two gifts. I had one from you and one from Randy Garn. And I looked and I was like, it couldn't get any better than that. Uh, Wait, GS pause, pause real quick. Yeah. How many pounds down are you on keto? Well, I'm going to get there. So let me tell my story. Don't, all right, don't all right, all right. But you, <laughs> you said, tell me a little bit about GSD and a little bit about your journey. You know, my journey over the past 25 to 30 years, I spent half that in full-time vocational ministry, pastoring churches, planting churches, uh, growing a, a, a Back in the late 90s, you know, the turn of the century, um, uh, a rather, you know, youth group, youth ministry from several kids to several hundred kids spoke on some big stages around the country with guys like John Maxwell and, you know, some 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 leadership experts. Everything that I've been able to accomplish over the past 30 years has always been done through relationships. Yeah. So I've been on this health journey now for about a year and a half, and I'm down about 77 pounds total. Ooh. And I was stuck. I was stuck. Last summer, I was stuck. And, and there's, you know, this year and a half journey, it's always been, you know, you get a plateau, you get stuck. For me, I meet somebody, and then it unlocks something. I walked into a mastermind in uh, Sundance, Utah, and I walked in, and I heard this girl talking in the kitchen, and she's talking about keto. I'm like, oh, my God, that sounds just like my buddy Gary Brecka. 
<laughs> Gary is 10X Health Systems. He just sold half a string line to Grant Cardone and to Brandon Dawson. Gary is a dear friend of mine. And I'm listening to her and I'm like, oh my God, she sounds just like Gary. And I walked up to you. It was you. <laughs> I walked up to you in the kitchen and I'm like, do you know Gary Brecka? And you looked at me like a cow at a new gate, as we say in Atlanta. And you were like, who? And I was like, Gary Brecka. I'm like, he talked, he says everything you're talking about, you know, number one, number two, number three, you sound exactly like Gary. I'll never forget. We walked upstairs. And I showed you a picture of Gary on Instagram and you were like, oh my goodness, your girlfriend had sent you a video of him the day before or the week before and you had no idea with him, right? She's like, Terry, you got to meet Gary. You got to meet, you you got to know this guy. And then I was like, oh my gosh. Okay. And then you FaceTime him what, like a week later. Yeah. 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 Yeah, And And we nerded out hard. We nerded out hard. So, (laughs) you know, when you ask my story, it's always about relationships and there's always relationships tied into it. So, uh, you know, Gary had been trying to get me going keto and then obviously Miss short term keto. Oh, Miss short term keto over here is like, you need to do keto. Yeah. And not, I'm I, not even a keto, you know, I'm not a, a, a yeah. preacher of keto, but I'm like, you, you need to do keto. Let me, let me explain some things to you. <laughs> I did keto and I've dropped 20 plus pounds in, you know, four months, five months. Um, it's been a game changer for me it's, it's been something that's, you know, on this journey, it's just helped me get over that next plateau. And yeah. I set a, I set a 10 X goal about a year and a half ago to lose 66 pounds. I write my goals down twice a day. Now that that goal right there is now 86 pounds, which I'm almost there. So once I get to 86, it's going to go to one Oh six and then I'm stopping there. Um, but I'm going to drop my, my goal is to lose over a hundred pounds. And, you know, when you talk about GSD, we do three things. We help business professionals build confidence gain clarity and create community. So confidence, clarity, and community, huge. It it literally is, I think it's the three keys for businesses to be able to unlock uh, businesses and in your personal life. And and that's always done through the power of relationships. And so girl, number one, I'm honored to be on your podcast. Number two, I would not be where I'm at right now in my health journey had it not been for you. I I love this so much. And it's, it's so completely true that you're feeling like it's uncomfortable sometimes I feel like when we're very driven people, and if you guys missed it on YouTube, if you're listening on audio, he just held up his journal that he uses for yeah. his GSD journal, which is amazing. And thank you for sending me one. I love it. I oh, love you're it. And you're, you're, when he says those things, what they're doing, he's not just, that's not lip service. Like you're living that every single day, those things. And I hear you talk about it all the time of, Hey, it's Sunday night. This is what I'm doing tonight. This is yeah. how I live, you know? Um, but yeah, it's sometimes uncomfortable when, we're so driven like that and we know what we want and then we have to kind of wait for things to come in, yeah. you know, but I, I feel like if we're not in action, pushing towards it, we won't recognize that treasure when it does pop in, you know? Mm-hmm. And so exactly the, the people in my life and it, many of the people from that mastermind breakthrough mastermind that we're in together have been yeah. those people for me. So yeah, relationships. Yeah. So, okay. So let's say somebody's, you know, they're, they're wanting to get on their journey. Let's say they've got a goal. They want to go into real estate, you know, something like that. You're more your realm, or they want to be a health coach like me. They're like relation. So how, like, what do I do? How do I get these relationships? You know, what do you advise on? Because so, you're the king of that. Well, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. I just got off of like back to back to back to back calls. And it's so funny. I'm on a call with a girl. I've been back up a week. One of the guys that's speaking at our conference in Atlanta calls me. He goes, you've got to meet this guy, big apartment complex guy from Texas. And I say big, this guy's got like almost a billion dollars under assets in personal. This is his. He's not even syndicated. These are his apartments. You got to meet this guy. So today I get a call from a friend of mine and I'm like, hey, this guy that somebody else referred me to last week and connected me an email. I saw you guys together on Instagram and she didn't even call me about that. She called me about something else. And I said, Hey, would you connect us? Because I'm trying to, I'm trying to get him to my conference in Atlanta with the CEO ticket. And uh, she goes, sure. I'd love to be able to do that. She goes, we're working on a $90 million apartment deal together right now in Atlanta. And I'm like, dude, you've got to meet this guy named a boss from San Francisco, a kid I met. I don't even know how I met him. He's the number one Remax agent. He's 24 years old. He's got 24 full-time VAs that work for him. He just closed a 30 point, I just got off phone with him, just closed a $31 million, his first apartment complex, raised like 8.1 million to get syndicated, to get this apartment complex. I said, you guys have got to meet, like y'all got to connect. And so when you talk about connection, it's not just 
connections and relationships to help me get to the next level. But when I meet people like that, I'm like, oh, you got to know so-and-so. Oh, you got to, you've got to meet you. We had a talk just a minute ago about a mentor of both of ours who mentors some of the top coaches, speakers, authors in the world. And he connected you with somebody else yesterday, which you said was a game changer in your career. The relationships that we have and the people that we meet sometimes aren't just for us. Yeah. They're for other people. And you have to be, when you're aware of that, yeah. and I call it significance over success. Mm-hmm. And I, this was the theme of my book is significant people or significant leaders build others around them so they can win. Understanding the Zig Ziglar quote, which is my favorite one, that if I help enough people get what they want, eventually I'm going to get what I want. Yeah. Six, people who chase success, they tend to use people around them yep. so they can win. Yep. So, do, and I had a mentor of mine 20 years ago. I just came off a of stage, 88, 8,800, almost 9,000 people at this conference, just came off a of stage right after John Maxwell. I was 31, 32 years old. Dude, I had the world by the tail. I thought, man, I have arrived. She sat me down the next day. This was the minute she spoke right after me. She sat me down the next day at lunch and she said, Ken, do you want to be significant or do you want to be successful? Because they're two vastly different things. And so it's been a journey for me for 20 years to really live a life of significance. Significant leaders understand that some of the relationships just aren't for them, but they're for you to connect to other people. Yeah. And I think it's that mindset of what you perceive as successful, right? If you're, if it's a lone journey and it's all about me and take, 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 you know, sure. Lots of people make money that way, but it's very empty. And I think if you want to have that full wholehearted, I love my life. And yes, you will still breed success, but that significance, that, 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 um, heart connection, that you have when all you're about is building up everyone around you that not only I, from my personal experience, because this speaks so deeply to me, I had a very, very deeply spiritual experience in which I was taught, like, forget about yourself, forget about you. You just don't worry about anything at all and create wins for other people. And you will win at levels that you can't even imagine right now. Just create wins for other people. Be super engaged in helping others win. And yeah, it's all it's done is brought not only success in, in business, but it's, it's so much more than that, that. I try to tell people, and I know you feel the same way. I'm like, this isn't really just like a business journey for me. This is a soul journey for me. This is like connecting to source or God or however you see that and channeling that into the world to create a positive ripple effect and help and serve. And I feel like when you're in that energy, God or the universe is like, yes, help that person because they are like working. They got their hands, they got to work. They're going to listen. They're going to, you know, do the right thing. So let's help that person, you know? So I, I be love a person. I, I, I say this to people all the time, be a person that wants something for people, not from people. Totally. Be totally. somebody that wants something for people, not from people. Yeah. And I'm sitting here I, on the other screen behind your Zoom screen. My buddy Ivan Ann's just texted me on WhatsApp. Ivan is, and it just reminded me, it's exactly what we're talking about. Ivan is a uh, Inc. 500, three years in a row, about to be four years in a row, which wow. is almost impossible. Because that means your business is scaling and growing the same pace every year, four years in a row. Wow. Um, I don't know what he's worth, tens of millions of dollars. Uh, he's got five companies on three continents. He's coming from Puerto Rico, flying up to speak at my conference in Atlanta at the end of January with John Maxwell and some really cool people. Um, and his whole talk he's going to do at my conference is the purpose behind your profit. Yeah. And Ivan's whole thing is right now is he has a thing called philanth- in philanthro investors and they do clean water and affordable housing around the world. Like that's his life mission right now. He runs, he doesn't, uh-huh. he has five CEOs over his companies. He does that. And all he does is focus on now, what can I do? How can I take what God's blessed me with? And how can I make an impact around the world? There it is. I think if that's your main goal, if that, if your main goal, it, like the joy that comes in when you get help from the universe, through these relationships, always, you're exactly right. It's always through relationships and it, it comes by surprise, right? You're like, well, dang, that was a big Wednesday. <laughs> that was cool. Um, because ding, ding, ding. But, 
but the joy that you experience is not for you. It's the excitement of being able to create more good in the world and more ripple effect. And like, oh my, the, the gratitude you feel for it because it's resources to help you create more goodness in the world. Like there, it's such an honor to be in that position. And I love, I love hearing about people who have found Uber success because it's not, it's not everybody, you know, there are people out there that are takers and they, they trick people and they lie and they, you know, manipulate people. But every time I've seen those kind of big successes, it all comes crumbling down eventually. It, it, it's hard. It's hard. And then I think if you're an individual that, you know, if you're a spiritual person or, you know, as a Christ follower, a man of faith, you develop empathy for people like that because yeah. you know, you're like, ah, I just want to help you avoid this. Right. Here's something I wrote down this week, and this is brand new for me. It's almost, an, I haven't even started developing this concept. But this is what I wrote down. Gratification comes from material items and it's only temporary. Right. Fulfillment comes from impact and it's eternal. Totally. There's a difference between gratification and fulfillment. And I talk a lot about, and I have for years. There's, there's something about living a day that, Tara, that, that you know at the end of the day, when you lay your head down on the pillow and there is a sense of fulfillment in your heart, you can't put a price tag on that. You can't buy fulfillment. You can't purchase fulfillment. You can purchase stuff that will gratify you all day long. You can buy stuff that will gratify you for a moment. But fulfillment is something that comes from impact you've made on other people's lives. Cool. And nobody can take that away from you. Cool. I, I, was, I was sharing with somebody this week that literally I, this is in, I've got a quotes and quotes and concepts ideas. It's a Google Doc. I just, when I get an idea, I dump it in there. And I've literally just put this this week. I was looking at a young kid of mine that was in my youth ministry 20 some odd years ago, Edward Bailey, uh, got out of, got out of high school, college, had a problem with, with math, with drugs, went into a faith-based long-term rehab program in Atlanta called No Longer Bound. Not only did he graduate, but then he interned, then he went on staff. And I think for about the last 12 years, he's been the executive director and mentored by uh, Frank Blake, the CEO from Home Depot. Cheryl Batchelder, the CEO from Popeyes. I mean, he's been mentored by some of the top CEOs in, in America or in, in Atlanta. And every time I see him, he's with his family now in an RV traveling around the country, helping faith-based long-term rehab centers grow the way he helped um, No Longer Bound grow. When I see that, I saw that video the other day. And I'm telling you, it's about nine o'clock at night. I text, We talk about once every couple of weeks. I text him. I said, dude, I am so proud of you. I went to bed the other day. This is where that whole fulfillment piece started coming for me and really explaining it to people. I went to bed the other night and I'm like, and it was like, God said, I allowed you to have your fingerprint and you to have a, a part in his life. Yeah. And there's nothing anyone can ever do. And I didn't pay for it. I couldn't earn it. I couldn't do anything. It was me making an impact and loving him when he was a guy who probably the world would say didn't even deserve to be loved. And now look what he's doing as a husband, as a father and making an impact around the country. That's fulfillment. You yeah. cannot put a price tag and it cannot be taken away from you. That, I love that story. Thank you for sharing that. And it's, it, there's no comparison. There's no, there's not even a, yeah. no money in the world, no amount of money that could compare to that feeling. I even, even small things, you know, when I get on calls with my clients and they have some deep heart shift where they're seeing themselves and, 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 and like proud of themselves and owning their power and getting rid of this, like, it, it brings me to tears. It's not uncommon mm -hmm. for me to cry on my client check-in calls because it's just like, it's, it's so uh, touching. It's, and it's, I saw Spider-Man twice this week and cried both times. If that makes you feel any better. I'm going to, I'm going to see it this weekend. So oh, you, okay. better, you better grab some clean ass girl. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's it's, I love that uh, between gratification and fulfillment. And I think, you know, when so often when we, and like you said about having empathy for people who are kind of in that taking energy, you realize that, that, that comes because I, I think we all kind of start there a little bit, right? When you're first starting, if you're doing, going in after business, you're kind of, it's very self-centered. At least it was for me at first. It was like, how do I do this? And how do I do that? And how do I be better and better and me and me and me and me? And it was honestly, for me, it was when I went to ayahuasca, I had this huge shift and it was just like, I had to see my shadows. I had to see that. I mean, it was like, is this about you or is this about them? Yeah. And when I had that shift, that's when everything changed, yeah. right? It's not about me being a good coach. It's about me serving, serving, right. being passionate, being obsessed with helping them, you know, yes. in my quiet moments in my heart, like what do they need, you know, and connecting to my heart, that's when everything changed. So, all right, yeah, let's talk about, oh, sorry. Did you have a comment? No, on no, that? no, 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 you, no, you're good. 
I want to know, can you explain what you mean when you say grow, stack, drive? Let's dive into that. What do yeah, you mean by that? So it was um, the name it was GSD. We all know that stands for get shit done. Yeah. Um, that's not why we did it that way. It just literally was an exercise we did with my team a year and a half ago. We were like, what are we going to call this? And this was actually going to be the name of a conference that we were going to do. And then COVID hit. And so it shifted everything. I went, okay, we're going to go ahead and do an online coaching group, which we sold out in about, I don't know, a week. We did that for 12 weeks. And in the middle of that, because obviously we couldn't do the event in Atlanta in May of 20, 2020, we did that course. And then I went to, I'm, I'm a Grant Cardinal licensee. Grant's a, been a dear friend. And yeah, I want to talk about that too. And, and, you're and, a, great, and a great, thing. and a great, and a great mentor. He's been phenomenal and really, really good to me. And I went down to a mastermind in, in June of 2020 and I'm sitting there and I just, every time I get around Grant, I get challenged to do more. I get challenged to help more. I get challenged to dream bigger. Like it, it is, it is, it, it, he grant has his own universe around him i mean literally his energy is like the first time i saw him in october 2019 was on the instagram post i'd never even heard of him before i didn't know who he was and i'm like who is i don't get around people that have more energy than i do and when i got around him i'm like i'm like who is this guy like it it drew me and so um so anyway we were talking about we were talking about grant i we were looking at this conference. I went down to Grant's mastermind and I'm at the mastermind and I'm literally sitting there and we started in the mastermind. He said, okay, there's 30 of us in the mastermind. We started in the back of the room. He goes, give me one word to describe the last two days. Cause we spent two eight hour days with Grant. And I had, I had written then in my 10 X planner before we had our planners, I wrote in big letters speed. And I was already Grant's number one licensee. I was already doing things. Nobody else was doing when I flipped that planner over and I said, Uncle G, I said, I've done a lot in this at that time, like eight months. I've done a lot in the last eight months. I said, but I'm not, I'm not risking enough. I'm not spending enough money and I'm not moving fast enough. And I flipped my, my journal around and he was sitting in his director's chair. And I said, my word is speed. I've got to move faster. Dude, Grant jumped up out of his chair. He's like, oh my God. Oh my God, Ken. He jumped up out of his chair, came over and bear hugged me. <laughs> and pick me up off the ground and the room's going nuts, right? Didn't you say and, he called uh, you preacher? He Didn't called you? me preacher. Yeah, he's like, hey, preacher. <laughs> and he goes, and he's like, oh my God, you know, he just went nuts. And uh, and he came over and I sat back down in my seat and I text my course and content creator girl in LA. This is Friday afternoon. I text my best friend, Nate May, who worked for John Maxwell for years. I said, I flew her in two days later. And I said, I need both of you guys all next week. And we sat and it cost me a chunk. And we sat for a week and we did all three of my course outlines on mindset, strategy, and leadership mm -hmm. development. Mm -hmm. And we did it for a week. And it caught, again, it cost me tens of thousands of dollars. But the only reason I took that step and I took that risk is because of the room I got in. Yeah. So inside my 10X planner, I wrote every single day inside my planner. My one quote was get in rooms with people who think bigger than you do. When I did, when I created my own planner, because this is like the 10X planner on steroids, for those of you guys watching on Zoom, I actually put the quote in my book. I mean, in my planner, get in rooms with people who think bigger than you do. It's, it's on every page in my planner. And I'm telling you, we talked about relationships up front. It is always about the rooms that you get in and the relationships you build. If you're stuck, you go get in a room. Yeah. If, if you're, if you're, if you're stuck, Find somebody that can help you get unstuck. I spoke in Miami uh, about six weeks ago, a pretty big conference. Floyd Mayweather, Ian Smith, uh, Brandon Dawson from Cardinal Adventures was there. Uh, Rich the Kid, which I don't know who Rich the Kid is until we got down there, but apparently he's a he's a big rapper who's, you know, anyway, you know, he's got a song called Plug Walk or Plug Life or something like that. He was a really cool kid. I got to hang out with him and spend some time. But I emceed the event, and I got to speak on Friday right before Brandon Dawson from Cardinal Adventures one of Grant's partners. And I said throughout the, the weekend, I said, some of you guys have invested 10 grand to be here for two days. If you're here only to hear Floyd Mayweather or to hear Brandon Dawson or to hear me or to hear somebody else, you, you're missing the boat. If you don't leave this room with these level, these caliber, the entrepreneurs and business owners who are going after it this hard, if you don't leave this room with five to 10 phone numbers, you've wasted your money. If all you can do is go home and go, man, I got to, I got to meet Floyd Mayweather and shake his hand, which Floyd super impressed me, by the way, too. Super humble, great guy. Um, I said, you, you've wasted your money. When you get in rooms like that, and I've said this, our event in Atlanta 
it's the number one entrepreneur conference in the Southeast at the end of January. I don't know when you're, oh. you're, you're, you're publishing this. I've got John yeah. Maxwell. I've got John Maxwell coming in, Jesse Itzler, Nicole Arbor, Dave Meltzer, Anthony oh. Trucks, oh. Um, Brent Gove, Ivan Ans. I mean, uh, Craig Siegel, Jen Gottlieb, Randy Garn, Randy's coming. I mean, the list is insane Amen. of yeah. the people that I've got coming in. And I, I've said this now for two or three weeks. The, the, you're going to hear some phenomenal information. But if you don't walk away with a dozen phone numbers from the people on the stage and the people in the seats, the entire theme of the weekend when we do this conference is this. We believe that businesses are built on relationships. And we believe relationships are built in circles, not rows. So we're going to do this whole thing in the round. We'll have 40 tables with 10 people at a table. There will be four. We can do 600. Oh. We're going to have a minimum of 400 people in the room at tables, cool. meeting each other, Love doing it. life together, building relationships together, because that's how we build our mm. businesses. I love that. And I, you know, this kind of makes me think of your story from the guy that's going around and spreading goodness. Like it's cool because you believe so much in community. Mm. It's amazing position for you to be in, to be able to create these conferences, but think of that ripple effect. Like you can't even imagine the yeah. ripple effect that's going to come out of every yeah. single one of those conferences, which is so cool. And it yeah. just bodes more that what we're talking about is like help other people win. And you just, it's such an honor to be in that position of helping other yeah. people. win. I love that with the circles too. That's yeah. very, very needed. And I think, you know, um, how about this? I, I have a question for you because I think some people, they, they want to go to stuff like you're talking about your amazing mm -hmm. conferences and they're anxious and they're nervous and they got self-limiting thoughts. Like <laughs> what if people don't like me or they're too afraid to go talk to people or they feel like they might be self-serving trying to build, you know, obviously you're very natural at this. I mean, you, you definitely, <laughs> <laughs> when you talk about it Grant, no, having more energy, I mean, you bring a presence yeah. in an event yeah. for sure, <laughs> but like, you know, I know it's kind of natural to you, but with you, what would you say to somebody who's like, oh my gosh, I'm so nervous to go to something like that. And like, how do I build relationships without being weird? <laughs> you know, any, any tips? Yeah. A couple things, uh, being interested before you're interesting. There you go. Yeah. Don't walk up to exactly. people and try to tell them what you're doing. I don't, I, don't, I try not to ever do that. Um, want something for people, not from people. How can I add value to people? Yeah. I, when I walk into a room, I'm like, how can I add value to the people in the room? Yep. There are two types of people. There are thermostats and thermometers. Thermometers gauge the temperature of a room. People who are thermostats change the temperature of the room. Hmm. They can walk into a room. I, I said this about Dave Meltzer. I don't know if you know Dave or not. But, I have. He, I've, he's um, been to the mastermind before I've heard him speak. It's phenomenal. I mean, Dave's yeah. like, I tell people all the time with Dave, when it doesn't matter how many people are in the room, he makes you feel like you're the only person in the room. Yeah. Yeah. And every time you leave an encounter with Dave, you feel like you can conquer the whole freaking world. You know, there is no goal that you have that you can't take care of when you get around Dave. And I, I say this to people all the time, be the type of person that when you walk in a room, people gravitate towards you instead of away from you. Yeah. Like they want to be in your presence. When yeah. you call somebody's phone and they see Tara Garrison, or Gary Brecka, or Grant Cardone, or Sharon Lecter, or or John Mack, you want to answer their phone call. You're like, dude, I can't wait to talk to them because when I get through with this phone call, I'm going to feel like a better human being and that I can accomplish anything I want to when I when I get through having a conversation with them. Yeah, I love that answer because I I have found, you know, especially having worked with many high performing clients. And these people, they have a lot of people that come up to them all the time and kind of want from them or whatever. And my, my energy is always like, unless I have something to help you with, like, I'm not going to bother you because <laughs> you're so busy. I'm uh, My mind is constantly engaged in like, how can I help this person? You know, how can I, what, even just listening to them, otherwise I'm not going to bother them. I know they're freaking busy. I, I, I can relate to that too. Right. Like, it's just like, um, this constant, it, it's a, it's a mindset of whether you, when you meet people, if there's something in it for you or for them. And I think that I, personally, I think a lot of social anxiety is ego because I'm like, if you're worried about what everybody's thinking of you and stuff, you're only thinking about yourself. And if you get out of your own freaking way and stop caring yeah. and actually just start being others focused instead of so, so self-focused, you won't even think about what, I think that's why both you and I are able to talk well, yeah. speak well in front of the camera and whatever, because it's not about us. We're literally right. just trying to help. Right. And it right. moves all the anxiety. So, yeah. Well, again, when you with significant leaders, people who start out to be significant will always be successful. Yeah. People who start out to chase success 
may or may not find significance and more than likely you're going to leave a trail of damage behind them because yeah. they're, because it's, it is about them. It's not about the other people in the room. Right. And when you're about other people and you're like, how can I add value? How can I help? Like even on the call today, when, when I, when, uh, when a boss called me earlier about his ticket to my conference, I'm like, dude, I just meant, I just mentioned your name just like 10 minutes ago on the phone call with this other guy in Houston, who's doing a $90 million deal. You just did a third. You guys have got to meet each other because there's no telling how, what you guys can learn from each other. You can ask one question of each other and it saves you a hundred grand or 200 grand on your next deal. Y'all got to talk. So what I do connected those two guys together. It's not about me. It's about them. And when they understand and Ken is interested in me, me growing, me developing, me coming the best, me becoming the best version of who I can be, dude, for them to drop five grand or 10 grand to come to an event, they're like, dude, I'm in. Because he, they know that not only me, but the people that I put on that stage and that platform, they have the same DNA I do. Like, I don't put people on my platform that are self-serving. Right. Or if I do, I've done it once. I've had one individual and he's not been back since then. Yep. Like yep. it is because it is not our DNA. It is not who we are. We, mm. we understand the power of community and we protect that community big time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the mastermind that we met at, it has that same energy. And I've noticed over the years, I'm like, if you come in here and it's about you and you're like, actually, you're trying to like take from people, you literally, it's like the energy will reject you. Like you will, you will not feel comfortable. You will not fit in. If you are not a heart based leader that really freaking cares, you're just not going to feel comfortable in here. It's literally like an energy thing. So yeah, I appreciate that. You're right. You're right. I want to ask you, so some people might be hearing you say that you write down your goals twice a day. You write in these planners every single day. And I hear some people, you know, I, I know, I know because I do the similar process with my clients and they're like, oh, it's so, you know, like rigid. And, you know, so can you speak on, on that? Not only that, but also like the continual investment and in attending events and masterminds and all of these things. Cause it's like, you, you've already reached a very high level of success yet you continue you're not like oh i made it now i can just sit back and you know watch netflix and <laughs> right so yeah. like I'm, I'm curious in your mindset because i think some people do think like oh i'll get to a certain level and then i'll just sit on the beach all day and drink mimosas or whatever the what keeps you um in that practice of writing down your goals you know doing the daily habits continually investing in events you know can you share just how you think in that way yeah, it's funny because I've had about 10 people over the last, since Miami, I've had about 10 people call me and go, dude, I want to do a live event. I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. I'm just telling you. No, you don't. When you got a stroke, you know, almost six figures to John Maxwell and you're like, where are we going to get this money from? How are we going to do this? Why are we doing this? Right. You, you better be able to get centered on your vision and mm-hmm. what you want to do. And for us, it's helping business leaders build confidence, gain clarity and create community. We know what we do. We know what we do well. And for me, especially being a, you know, a former pastor, it's a call for me. I know it's a calling. I know God has positioned me to be able to do this, especially on the community side, because man, we do it really, really well. And so why do we, I write the goals down twice a day because uncle G said, this is what you need to do. And when I started to do it, man, things started changing in my life because what it does is, is it helps you get centered and focused every single day. One of the things that we added in my planner that that really I created is two things. Number one is the most important time of your week is Sunday night. Every yep. Sunday night. You, you, I yeah. do the same thing. It's Sunday night. I go live almost every Sunday night on Instagram and on it's our so good, guys. GSD Facebook page. I go live and what do I do? I talk about there are five hours for Sunday. We have five hours, rest, relax, replenish, refocus, and uh, not re- yeah, reflect and refocus, rest our bodies, uh, relax our mind, replenish our heart, uh, re- uh, reflect on our pa- on the past week, and then refocus our vision. And when we refocus our vision, I literally go straight to my Google calendar. I open up my planner. I write all my appointments in all week long, all throughout the planner. Okay. And then I make sure before I go to bed that my Monday is full. I know exactly what I'm going to do. If you need an alarm clock to get out of bed, your goals aren't big enough. And what happens is a lot of times when our alarm clock goes off, if it's 4, 4 4.35, 5.36, whatever time our alarm clock goes off in the morning, we get up and we're like, what am I going to do today? What does today look like? When I go to bed on Sunday night, I know exactly what my Monday looks like. Literally, girl, you'd be proud of me. 
my workout clothes are in the chair beside my bed. My, pre, <laughs> my pre-workout is mixed up and it's in the refrigerator. My yeah. reds, greens, and relight. Thank you very much. That's that's <laughs> one of that's one of your deals. My reds, greens, and relight is mixed up and it's in the refrigerator. It's ready to roll. So when that alarm clock goes off at 4:30, or I happen to wake up before, which I do about half the time. I'm up about yeah. four to four fifteen. I'm ready to roll. I know exactly what my day looks like. So what does it do? Dude, it catapults me out of bed. There's no, well, I don't know if I want to get up today. No, it's like, dude, I can't, I'm going to go, I'm going to go bust today right in its ass. Yep. Like I'll get up sometimes and I'll post on Instagram. Hey, Tuesday, I'm up and you don't stand a chance. Like I'm about to dominate you. Yep. Like I am going to crush today. And it starts with understanding what your day looks like, your schedule. And then it, and then it starts with you writing your goals down. Exactly. exactly. You should be able to rattle your goals off to anybody. If somebody says, Ken, what's your goals? Tara, what's your goal? You ought to be able to rattle off business goals, personal yeah. goals, financial goals. I literally have mine right here. I, I do the same thing. I do the same thing. We have a, in my coaching, we call it the Eagles perch. It's when we're taking that like 30,000 yeah. foot view and we're holding ourselves accountable for like, did I do all that stuff that I said I was going to do in this past week? And it's not a shame thing. So I think some people, they get blocked by like, they don't want to do that because they, they shame themselves and feel like failure. That's not necessary. Right. It's looking objectively of like, what's the breakdown here? Is my goal off? Do I not really want that thing? Is there some, something getting in the way, what needs to shift. And because otherwise, if you keep making goals and you're never checking in on if you're keeping up with them or not, you're just stressing yourself out for no reason, you know, and you're exactly right. Like if you don't continuously stay focused on it, that's why I do the same exact thing. You, you lose it. You forget, you know, and that, that you hit the nail on the head about the excitement of the day when you know what to expect. And I, honestly, like you hear a lot of people say morning routine begins the night before, you know, and it's so true because when I lay out my workout clothes, something about that symbol of doing that literally makes me want to fall asleep. It's like, I can feel my body being like, yay, I can't wait for that power yes. in the morning. Yeah. Like, let's go. Like, it's exciting. Yeah. You know, it's like your kids going to bed early on Christmas. And that's what it feels like every single day for me yeah. every day. And, and you too. Um, Let's see, in terms of uh, investing, because you know, the, the, the mastermind we met at, when I joined that first one, it was literally like every penny I had. It was it, yeah. it was like, it was like a hard gamble. It was like, but I knew, I knew my soul was like, you know, like there is no doubt, like you gotta do it. And man, has that up leveled me. So what about investing in these kind of events? And I think that's a barrier for people, right? Even hiring a coach. Huge. It was it's huge, it was huge for me. Yeah. When I saw Grant on that Instagram ad, October of 2019, a week later, I, I followed him. A week later, I'm in a Saturday webinar where mm. he pitches mentorship. Right. I signed up I, and I didn't. So it's supposed to be 90 minutes. If you know anything about Grant Cardone, dude, he didn't come up for air for two hours. <laughs> He's rolling. I don't even know. Is he breathed in two hours? He's just, and I'm sitting there. I'll never forget. I'm sitting there on my island in my kitchen. I've got my MacBook Pro on Saturday. It's like noon. And I'm like, dude, if you'll shut up, I'll buy whatever it is you're selling. I don't know what you're selling. I know it's got something to do with mentorship and coaching because that's what you're talking about. I'm buying. It was $1,000 for a 12-week mentorship. And I'm like, ooh, 1000 bucks. Oh, okay, I'm doing it. I, I'm going to take the step. Yeah. I signed up. Let's listen to this story. I signed up on Saturday. Monday night was our first mentorship call. Monday afternoon at 3 p.m., I get a call from a banker. I'm working on a $3 million commercial deal. It was my largest deal ever as a real estate agent. $78,720 was my commission. One deal, single deal. We get a call that afternoon. I represent the buyer. The seller is unrepresented. It's an unlisted property. 72-year-old Chinese man owns the building. He can't speak English, or at least he didn't act like he could speak English because we had to go through his 22-year-old grad student daughter. She was our, quote, unquote, his representation. The appraisal comes in at $2.625 million. I'm three hundred and seventy-five grand short on the appraisal. Mm. The banker calls the, the Chinese guy, talks to the daughter. He thinks we've got the appraisal to come in low so we can buy the building cheaper. He will not budge off of $3 million. My deal is dead. It's, I mean, it's effectively dead. Mm -hmm. Get on a call Monday night. Grant goes, I'm doing a thing called 10X Boot Camp in Miami in three days. It's normally six grand. You can come for five because you're in the men mentorship program. And I'm thinking five grand. I, I mean, I'm like going to be seven grand in like in a week. And I just saw this guy on Instagram yeah. like 10 days ago. 
Right. And, I, and I literally sat there in my chair and I went, I'm going to do it. And I took a step, invested, because I trust me. I yeah. trust this investment right here more than yeah. I trust any other investment. Yeah. Three days later, I'm in Miami. Friday, we get through Friday. I'm like, where in the world has this been my whole life? It was so impactful. I told Grant a couple months later, it was like the businessman got born again on the inside of me on Friday. It mm. was like something came alive. Saturday morning, I walk into a Q&A with Grant because I was in the mentors. There's 25 of us in the room. I grabbed the mic. I pitched the same deal I just pitched to you. I pitched to Grant. And Grant looked across because we had just had a one-on-one -on -one conversation and for about five minutes, an hour and a half before. And he looks at me and he goes, buy the building. And I, I was like, what do you mean buy the building? We're $375,000 short on the appraisal. He said, Ken, over, if your client overpays for the building now, when you sell the building for him, someone will overpay for it then. I said, okay. We got done that day at 5 p.m. I called my client. He's an African businessman in, in Atlanta. I called him on the phone. I said, Steve, I'm down here in Miami at this thing called 10X Boot Camp with this guy named Grant Cardone. Oh, I love Grant Cardone. I've got money in Cardone Capital. I'm like, awesome. This is what he said to do. And he said, well, how are we going to do that? I said, I'm going to meet with the seller and try to negotiate a seller held second for the 375 grand. He goes, let's close the deal. I flew in Monday. I negotiated a seller held second. We closed on Wednesday. I made $78,720 on that one deal. I would not in the rest of the year, I closed another almost 2 million. I made $129,000 the last six and a half weeks of 2020. I used all of that investment to put into becoming a Cardone licensee and starting my GSD brand. I would, it would have been impossible had I not taken the risk in investing in myself and taking those two steps that I did with the grant. And every time I invest 10 grand for a mastermind, 10 grand for a diamond seed or 15 grand for a diamond seed at growth. Every time I do it, I up level exactly what you were talking about just a moment ago. Yeah. And I love that you highlighted that moment where you were like, it, it, it's it's a moment of knowing in yourself. Like, <laughs> I, need, I need to do this. I know right. I need to do this, right? Because there's lots of things we can all invest in, right? And sometimes yep. it just doesn't feel right. I get, I know, I'm sure you do too. I get hit up for all sorts of things all the time. And I go off that feeling. It's like, that just doesn't feel aligned for me. But if it, when it's that one, and yep. it sometimes it can be scary because it's like, seriously, that's like all this, that's everything I got pretty much. Right. Like, really? Like, yep. but you just know, it's just yep. 10x, 100x, 1000x, million x. I mean, it's just insane that investment in ourselves. And I love that you said, I want to highlight that you said that you trust you mm -hmm. more than anything else. Why, why do you, what, what do you think that is? Because I know some people don't, they don't trust themselves at all. They're like, yeah. oh, I'm going to throw this money into this thing and then I'm never going to yeah. do anything with it. Right. Why well, do you trust I, yourself? I trust myself now more than I ever have. I trusted myself then. To know because I was stuck. I mean, I was making 120 grand, 130 grand a year doing real estate. I was working 15 hours a week. I was bored mm -hmm. to death. Umpiring college baseball, I was overweight. I was umpiring college basketball, not as much because I was overweight. I was out of shape. I just was like, I just was, I just was, I had no vision, no purpose, no passion. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know what? But I knew what my mortgage company looked like. I knew what I looked like when I was pastoring my church. I knew what I knew what I could do. I knew what I could accomplish. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to make an investment. I'm going to take a risk because it's going to pull me forward. And that's exactly what it did. The moment I sent him five grand for that ticket, it was like, okay, your ass better show up now because now you've got some, now you've got some skin in the game. And I, I'm just telling you, when you invest and you put some skin in the game for yourself, it, it literally, and Grant talks about it all the time, it pulls you forward. And that's what it's done for a year and a half. Yeah, that quote that you have in your journal, it's uh, get in rooms with people who get, think bigger than you. That's it. So I remember, I don't know, I don't, oh, you weren't at this breakthrough mastermind, but Scott Duffy, who who leads it, um, he was talking about his experience. Um, he was actually on Warren Buffett, uh, not Warren Buffett, I'm sorry. Um, uh, oh my gosh. Um, Richard Branson. Richard Branson. There is. Thank you. Richard Branson's island. He was out on, on his island, like with all these, like, you know, world leaders basically in business. 
And I, I'll never forget, Scott was saying, there is something about the energy of these people. And you said the same thing about the thermostat thing and like changing the energy. The There's something about the energy of these people that is just different. And I'm like, well, I can't, I know what you're talking about. Cause I'm feeling it in this room right now with all of these people who just think big, you know, it's, it's, it changes you because in the casual conversations you have with them, it, the, the way people who think big, like if something feels off in the energy, like you're thinking in scarcity or so they're like, it, it's like a foreign language to them. They're like, wait, yeah. why, why are you thinking like that? Like, you know, and so it's just it, it, the immersive experience. And I, I shot my hand up when Scott said that I'm like, can you describe the energy? Can you describe it? Like what, what word would you have for it? He's like, it's indescribable, but it is something about an energy that is just so magnetic that it just levels you up and awakens something inside of you. And that's what I'm hearing you say is this experience. Yeah. Yeah, my buddy Matt Smith, who was on um, Undercover Billionaire with Grant, he was the mattress store owner that hired Grant in the show. Yeah. So Matt cool. reached, I'm speaking at Matt's event in Pueblo in a couple months. Matt reached out to me and goes, hey, we're going to have Grant on Clubhouse last night. Do you want to come on? And then Joel Buer is another 10X buddy of mine. So I went on last night when Joel texted me this morning. He goes, hey, dude, thanks for being there and supporting everything. I was like, yeah, dude, it was great. I didn't get it. You know, I didn't say a lot, which is I'm probably hard for some of you guys to believe. And he was like, <laughs> And he was like, and I was like, but I wanted to be there for Grant and for Matt because dude, they're in there. They're telling the story of undercover billionaire. Like the yeah. energy in the room last night was so huge. I'm like, I don't need to say anything. Hey, I'm just going to sit here and listen. This is, this is, this is entertaining and enjoyable to get to hear the behind the scenes from Discovery's undercover billionaire with Grant. It was amazing. It was amazing. But the energy, even on that clubhouse room last night was ridiculous. Yeah. And that, that, that high vibration, like, you know, when you found it, cause you literally, your soul just resonates with it. It's just, it's something about it just pull, draws you in. And it's like, stay there as much as you can invest, be around people yeah. that pull you up into that energy. And then you also become one of those people, you know, and people, I'm sure you experience this all the time. I know I do. Like you can tell when you're around people, like they're, they're drawn to your energy because you're, you're in a, you know, Joe Dispenza talks about this in his book. And I thought it was fascinating. I think this was in becoming supernatural. He talks about how, like, when you're in scarcity, you literally take from the energy field around you. When you're in abundance, you give to the energy field and that makes you magnetic, you know, and it's cool. It's, it's wonderful. It's, it's such a wonderful place to be in because it's again, goes back to your topic of fulfillment is like, if you can be at a random party and, and pass some goodness off to somebody right. just cause like, it's, it's just amazing. It's like, you're so honored to be in that space. It's crazy. I was telling, I was telling her, we we're talking about gratitude this week and we we're talking about giving back and, yeah. and, and being in generosity. And I, I was telling them about, I was pastoring at the time and I went through the Chick-fil-A in Atlanta where I live. And, you know, in Atlanta, there's a Chick-fil-A like every hundred yards. If you throw a rock, you hit three chick fil there, <laughs> there are that many Chick-fil-A. We'll want to move there now then. <laughs> there, it's amazing. So we go through Chick-fil-A and I buy breakfast for the car behind me, eight bucks, whatever it was. I gave him a little invite card to my church. And I know the manager, I knew all the, you know, the kids that worked there. But I go in like two days later and Bobby's like, Dude, you're never going to believe what happened the other day when you left. It, we've talked about it for two days. I'm like, well, what happened? He goes, you bought the car behind you, 17 cars in a row, bought the breakfast for the car behind them in the line. There was such a buzz and energy of generosity oh. until... Until the 18th car was buying lunch, like for the whole office, it was 88 bucks. And the car behind them was like, car in front was like, no, I'm not buying, I'm not paying 88 bucks. But anyway, it was such a buzz just from the energy from being generous and wanting to do things. I call it random act of kindness. Yeah. Just doing something for somebody that can't do something for you, or you're not expecting something in return. Yeah. You know, it's funny you brought that up. Cause I've got my gratitude journal here that I do in the mornings and um, our mutual friend, Tony child, he has a whole mm -hmm. program on gratitude, gratitude shift. It's it's, it was anyway, I, I, I ran out of my other gratitude journal and I grabbed this out of my little bag that I go to conferences and stuff with. And it, this is apparently from our, la our breakthrough mastermind. And I open it up and I've got one thing written on here. Like the last page it was open to, and it says gratitude. I wrote Tony, think, feel, act. And then I just wrote really big generosity is the highest level of gratitude. And when you understand that, when you start being generous, it just cause it's almost like you're like thanking people. That's your energy is like, thank you for letting me be generous because like, it's I, like crack cocaine. You're like, dude, I just, I want to go do something for other people because of not for you and the feeling you get, but just watching. And that's that fulfillment that we talked about earlier. It's right. huge, I, absolutely huge. 
Yeah. Giving and receiving I've learned it's always happening at the same time, you know? So you're not really giving You're you're also receiving, but you are giving and so are they yeah. And even t- receiving people's goodness is giving. So you can give them that amazing feeling. So yeah, I love that you hit generosity at the end. Okay. So I'm going to try to push this episode up so we can get it out before your event at the end of January. That'd be, that'd be amazing. First of all, like, I guess, I'll do it in the intro, but we didn't really clarify, like, how can people partake of what you're doing? So you're doing, it's, it's a business mentorship. And then you also have events. Yeah. So we do. Better? So gross tech drive. We, again, the three things we do, we help business leaders build confidence, gain clarity, create community. We do that in three different ways. We've got a monthly membership. It's $197 inside of that membership. We do two coaching calls. I do a Monday morning and a Wednesday night coaching call zoom, usually four dozen, about four dozen entrepreneurs from around the country nice. from brand new startup to my top guys doing about 91 million a year. Wow. Uh, and we've got them um, every, well, every sex, there's only male and female, but to both sexes and all kinds of colors and all yeah. kinds of ages and all kinds of uh, revenue um, levels that they're at zero figure, six figure, seven, eight, and almost nine. Uh, We do that. We've got a private Facebook page that we do. And we also have, I've got all the online courses that I talked about earlier on mindset strategy and leadership development. All of, we call it the vault, all of the recordings from all the boot camps and live events, webinars, all of that, that content's there. That's our monthly membership. Um, We do a podcast called As the Leader Grows. My book, uh, which is what you can't see because you're not doing this on Zoom, but my book um, on Amazon, it's As the Leader Grows as well talking about significance is greater than success. That's the whole theme behind that book. And then we do, uh, we do live events and we're doing create in Atlanta, January the 28th, 29th, John Maxwell, Jesse Itzler, um, Nicole Arbor, Anthony trucks, Randy Garn, Jen Gottlieb. I mean, dude, Brent I love Gunn, Nicole Arbor so much. Oh, Nicole's been, <laughs> Nicole, we were texting each other yesterday. She's funny. She's, she's so funny great. I'm like, God bless you. God bless you. Yeah. If you guys don't follow her on social, you need to, and that's she's funny, dude. Yeah, John Maxwell. I mean, holy cow! Like yeah, it's John's, like the OGs. Yeah, yeah. John's you're phenomenal. you're connected to the OG space of yeah, these guys that have yeah. just changed the world, and you're bringing yeah. them for people to to watch. So we'll link that up in the show notes yeah. for you guys, and I'll do my very best to get that out in, in time for people to be able to attend that if they can. I got to get out to Atlanta. I got to come out to one of your events. You need to, you need to come January yeah. 28th and 29th, girl. You <laughs> just need to make it happen, right? You do you want to do a, you want me to you just want to do a not a, a role play, but we can do it. We can do it right now. I can teach them how to sell you a ticket right now on the spot. Uh, my, well, I'm doing a book launch party on the 29th. So if it oh. wasn't for that. Oh, are you doing it with Randy? For my Is book. Randy? For okay. My, oh, I got you. Got you. Yeah. Yeah. So I wish I could. I wish I could. But next time. Next time. I got you. Girl. Um, all right. So we'll link all that up. Ken, thank you not only for creating what you're doing on the business and the things, but you're so amazing about sharing that constantly on social. And you can, you can tell, like, you're always so pat, you're ready to serve, ready to serve. It's probably your preacher side. You know, you have a huge huge heart behind all that. And I've seen that many, many times. So thank you for coming and sharing your wisdom with us today. Thank you for everything you're creating. And thank you for being the humble. Thank you.